it's really a delight to be able to to introduce Laura Bratton to you this evening, um, and to and to extend to you the, the privilege of of hearing her talk about her her life and work. Uh, this was an idea that was hatched in the in in the living room of my house when Laura was here for a reunion uh, earlier this spring and was telling me about her new book. Uh, and I said if there was any way that she could uh, on her on her book tour, uh, make a stop by Princeton Seminary, that we would be really excited and grateful about that. And so she has agreed and so is here tonight. Yes. Uh, and so I want to tell you uh, a little bit about Laura, though some of you know her very, very well. So Reverend Bratton was born and raised in South Carolina. She graduated from Arizona State uh, University in the year 2006 with a degree in psychology. And we are most proud of the fact that in 2010, she received her Master of Divinity degree, Divinity degree uh, right here at Princeton Theological Seminary. She is ordained in the United Methodist Church. And since 2011, she has been the senior pastor at Lawrence Road United Methodist Church in her hometown of Greenville, South Carolina. In 2015, she founded Ubi Global, a firm which offers her speaking and coaching services to various groups of people but especially those who have suffered trauma or adversity of some kind in their lives. Two characteristic themes dominate Laura's life, grit and gratitude. Grit has helped her achieve great things despite her blindness, and gratitude is her response to God's gracious provision in her life to be able to achieve all those things that she has achieved, is achieving, and will achieve. All of us who were here at PTS while Laura was a student know well her grit and her gratitude. It took incredible commitment and hard work and patience and diligence day in and day out, in a word, grit, to succeed in a challenging academic program and to do so without the benefit of having anyone blazed a trail for her as a blind student. She was the first blind student to graduate from the Master of Divinity program. Even as she was learning, she had to teach all of us about her blindness and how we could best provide her everything she needed for her education. And she did so with grace, patience, and good humor. <laughs> and we also know her gratitude. Anyone who has spoken to Laura for even five minutes is struck by how grateful she is to everyone and for everything. This gratitude, which flows from her conviction that God has blessed her richly and equipped her for powerful Christian witness and leadership, is evident in everything that she does and everything that she says. It is therefore fitting that grit and gratitude constitute both the title and the content of her new book, Harnessing Courage, Overcoming Adversity with Grit and Gratitude, published just last month by Clovercroft Publishing. You will have a chance to purchase this book this evening and have Laura sign it after her talk out in the foyer if you like. Laura is going to speak to us tonight on a theme related to her book and her life, Exploring the Healing Power of Gratitude. Please join me in giving her a warm Princeton Seminary welcome. How is it that gratitude can be a healing resource for us? Not only a healing resource, but a healing resource in the midst of loss and in the midst of trauma as we go through the most difficult times in life, how is it that we can use the gift of gratitude to help us heal, to help us move forward, to help us continue living a life of meaning and purpose? In this time together, I wanna to share with you my story, my story of how gratitude has been a healing, powerful tool for me and to explore ways that gratitude can continue to be a healing resource for all of us. The first eight years of my life were very normal, very typical. I was an outgoing, fearless child. And then at the age of nine, I was diagnosed with an eye disease. And that diagnosis really didn't affect me, didn't affect the quality of my life. As a nine-year-old, I certainly didn't understand the emotional impact that the vision loss would eventually have on my life. So fast forward a few years to middle school. 
I couldn't read print anymore. The words, I could see them. I knew they were there. But it was blurry. It didn't matter how big they were or how close I was to it. The words were blurry. I couldn't see my locker anymore. No matter how close I got to it, I couldn't read the numbers to open it up. That's when I realized that my life was changing forever. I was in middle school. I was a teenager. Life is hard and difficult anyway. And there I was faced with a new reality, a new normal. How would I adjust? How would I move forward? Was it even worth continue living? Was it even worth moving forward? Then in high school, I lost a lot more sight. At that point, it wasn't safe for me to navigate my surroundings by myself without the help of a guide dog, a cane, or sighted guide. So again, yet another change as my vision rapidly decreased. So again, going back to the question I asked, in the midst of that grief, in the midst of that traumatic transition, how was gratitude a resource that healed me, that empowered me? I'm not grateful for what happened. It is not a matter of being grateful for now being a person with a disability, for being labeled as a person who is disabled. All the difficulty that comes with that, that is not what I'm grateful for. If I could change it, I absolutely would. So then what am I grateful for? I am grateful for the people and events and situations that surrounded me so that, so that I could continue to live, so that I could continue to move forward with life in the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the trauma. So gratitude is not being grateful for the difficulty. It's being grateful for the people and the situations that surround us in the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the grieving, in the midst of the loss. Several examples that I want to share. The first one that was powerful for me that I realized and am so grateful for was the fact that my parents did all that they could to research to find out what support is out there for people who are blind. That was brand new to us. We didn't know anything about people who are visually impaired and how you live a life as a person who's visually impaired. I'm grateful that they did that research. I'm grateful that they continued to hold me to the same standard as they held with my brother. They didn't treat me different, less than, I still had the responsibilities of my chores and all the daily, unfortunately, all the daily tasks that I had to do, I still had those. And in the moment, I was not grateful for that. I wanted to be able to use the blindness as a crutch. But now, reflecting back, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that they held me to the same standard that they did not allow me to use my disability as an excuse, as something to hold me back, to prevent me from living with meaning and purpose. I'm also grateful for my brother. My brother who would say to me night after night after night, quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. You can take that word out of your vocabulary. We will not quit. He would remind me of this night after night after night as I was struggling, crying, depressed, anxious. Quitting is not an option. Again, in the moment, I wasn't grateful. But reflecting back, Incredible healing comes when I can reflect back and know I did not quit. 
because I had that support system around me. I'm grateful for the family. I'm also grateful for the friends, for the community. An example that I will never, ever forget. It was my fifth, fifth grade school year, starting a new school year, and it was right before my birthday. School is going to start right before my birthday. So what do you get when your birthday is in August and you're starting a new school year? You get school supplies, new school clothes, right, every year. So my best friend Mary comes and knocks on the door, and she said, I know it's a couple days before your birthday. I know it's a couple days before we start school, but I've got your birthday presents. I want to share this gift with you. I want to go ahead and give it to you now. So she came in, we sat down on the couch, and it was this big basket, and it was filled with lots of small gifts. I'm sure it was nail polish, it was cute hair ties, it was lip gloss, it was all those things that fifth grade girls want, I'm sure. But there was one gift, there was one gift that I will always remember. Sticking out of that basket was a large print ruler. And I pulled that ruler out and I looked at that ruler and at that point I could see large print. As long as there was a contrast and it was large print, I could see it. Mary had found a large print ruler and then she had taken a Sharpie and written over the numbers in large print so that I could see the numbers. Why is that a gift I will never forget? That is a gift that I will never forget because Mary was saying to me, I know your needs and I am meeting you right where you are. Deep, deep gratitude. I am forever grateful for Mary who knew my needs, recognized my needs, and did what she needed to do to meet my needs. Incredible appreciation and thanksgiving. As Shane shared in the introduction, I am thankful for the community, for the friends, and for this very community. Going through college was an incredibly healing time. Being around people, other people with disabilities to normalize the fact that I wasn't the only person in the world with a disability. And as I applied to grad school and coming here, being the first person who would go through the program, complete the program, who was blind, it was a process of learning, of me learning how to advocate for my needs. What do I need? How do I communicate those needs? And how does the school work together? Again, deep gratitude, not for the difficulties, not for the intense intensity and just the effort, and yet so grateful. So grateful that the administration, the staff, the professors were willing to do what it took to work together. One administrator said to me in the spring before I started in the fall, we were having a conversation about different accessibility and getting textbooks and trying to make everything accessible. And he stopped in the middle of the conversation. He said, Laura, this will not be a bed of roses, yet we will work together and we will make it happen. This will not be a bed of roses, but we will work together and we will make it happen. A powerful example of how gratitude comes along, meets us where we are in the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the trauma, and surrounds us. So for each of you, as I've shared my story, what has been your loss, your trauma? What difficulties have you been in in the past? What difficulties are you facing now? Who has been your Mary? 
that has met your needs, recognized your needs, and provided that large print ruler? Who has been your community like PTS was for me? Those people, those communities that surrounded you and said, I know this is difficult. This is difficult and new for all of us. Yet we will work together and we will make it happen. Incredible gratitude for how the gratitude, the gracious, surrounds us in the time of difficulty. As I've shared my story, as you think about your stories, how can we use gratitude on a day-to-day basis? Not only in the trauma, but on a day-to-day basis, when things are good, when things are difficult. Two resources that have been very powerful for me. The first is taking a moment, taking a few moments every night at the end of the day to write down or to simply think about, what am I grateful for this day? Not yesterday, not worrying about tomorrow. What happened this day that I'm grateful for? Some days that is easy. Some days you can list off many things, many people, many events. Other times, it is difficult. It's painful. It's hard. Those gratitude moments don't just pop in your head. So the point is not to have a certain amount or number, but to deeply think about what am I grateful for today? What surrounded me, helped me, empowered me through this day? Writing down and thinking about those actions that we are grateful for is incredibly healing to cultivate a life of gratefulness. Another resource that has been a wonderful tool is simple but yet powerful. It is the gift of saying thank you. It is so simple, yet it is so hard. We get busy, we get overwhelmed, we get exhausted. And yet, if we can step back and take the time to say thank you, to say thank you to those strangers that just come across our lives and our paths quickly, and to those people that we are most closest to, to take the time to say thank you. It is a gift to them, and it is a gift to us. It helps us to reframe our lives, our day, our perspective, and help us to operate from a perspective of being thankful, rather a perspective of being stuck in the grief, in the loss, in the difficulty. So writing down events we're grateful for and saying thank you are two powerful resources that help us each and every day, to cultivate that life. There are countless ways to give gratitude. The method is not what is important. It's creating that life that is important.